So I, female 34, was having a horrible toothache. I had taken medication to ease the pain, but it was bad, like you need to go to the dentist level of bad. So I scheduled an appointment and was told to come yesterday. My husband's 37, best friend Terry, male 33, got into an accident and injured his knee. He has been staying with us for several weeks. My husband looks after him as he sees him living alone and needing assistance. I welcomed him to our home, but found myself having to clean up after him, bring him his medication and cook for him. And if I take a long time to get something done, he'd call my husband and basically tell on me, which makes my husband mad. He says it's temporary and also, since I'm home 24-7 and he is working, then I should help care for his friend. It has become quite overwhelming because now I can't leave the house if my husband isn't there with his friend. As I stated previously about the dental appointment, I told my husband the night before and he pitched a hissy fit, saying I can't leave Terry home alone. I suggested he take time off work and stay with him, but he said it wouldn't work with such short notice. He suggested that I reschedule, but I said no, even showed him how bad the swelling was, yet he told me to hold on for another day. He went to work early and I decided I'd still go. Terry was in the living room. He sleeps on a large mattress in the living room and saw me making my way out as mom was waiting at the door. He asked where I was going and I told him about the dental appointment. He had an attitude and raised his voice at me, telling me to go back upstairs and cancel. Mom stepped in and started arguing with him, asking who he thought he was. He went on about how he couldn't move and then threatened to call my husband if I stepped a foot out of the door. I took my mom and left. He ended up calling my husband, who then tried to call me repeatedly for two hours till I turned my phone off. Instead of returning home, I went to stay with my mom because I was in tremendous pain and my husband started yelling at me, calling me stubborn for still going after he told me to reschedule and irresponsible for leaving his injured friend home alone. Mom told him off, which escalated the argument between us. He's currently staying at home along with his friend, while constantly pressuring me to stop hiding behind mom and come deal with the results of having him leave his job for hours after I blindsided him and went against his wishes. So, am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Sounds to me like you should continue staying with your mom and let your soon-to-be ex-husband start his new life with his partner, Terry. I'm so glad you're at your mom's. Stay there and make sure you have the police come when you go get your clothes. Get the heck out and stay there. Do not go back into that house unattended. He's 33 with an injured knee, not 97 and on his deathbed. Since your husband and Terry are on the same side, just give Terry your ring. Clearly your husband loves him more. Jeez, I'm trying to wrap my head around being a guest in someone's home because I'm injured and they're taking care of me, then ordering that person around, yelling at them and threatening them with consequences. Terry effectively owns the place and thinks OP is the live-in, unpaid servant. He's never going to move out. Girl, get a divorce, LMAO. Not the idiot, obviously, but you're going to be an idiot to yourself by putting up with someone who values the needs of his friends over the health of his wife. Also, the concept of one grown man telling on a grown woman to another grown man is completely baffling. Why are you living like this? My God, for your husband to treat your health as less important than his best friends is despicable. People can die from an infected tooth. I think your husband's best friend is his actual lover. Do not waste any more time of your life being a front for his other lifestyle. If he truly loved and cared about you, he wouldn't be risking his wife's life and his marriage for a friend, regardless of whether he's a best friend. It doesn't work like that. You can die from an infected tooth, and if it was at the point it was swollen, that isn't a wait until tomorrow situation. Get a police escort to go to your home and get your things. And then it's time to consider filing for divorce. You want nothing more to do with this man or Terry. Last year, I got two puppy sisters, Sadie and Gizmo. They're big girls, so I have a six-foot wooden fence around my property so they don't go running off and can't jump it. They're pretty well trained except for Sadie. It's been an uphill battle training her not to run after cats or cars when she's on a leash and out of the yard. So that's another reason I made sure to have a high enough fence to keep them in. They've got their own doggy door, so they can go in and out as they please when I'm at work. 
My girlfriend is a scary driver, drives fast, swerves on purpose, etc. My house is off the main road, so she does it a lot coming and going when she visits or stays over. I hate driving with her and won't if I don't have to. Basically, everyone has warned her about it. A couple of weeks ago, I had to drive with her. My car had two flats and we just had a nasty snowstorm. So girlfriend was going to take me to go pick up two new tires. True to fashion, my girlfriend goes fast on an icy road and is having a grand old time making her car fishtail on damn ice. Unfortunately, she lost control going around the turn and out of nowhere came Sadie and she got hit and sadly passed. I did everything in my power not to lose it on her then and there, got out and told her to go. I'd have a friend take me. I found a snowbank in the yard that had iced over and I guess Sadie jumped the fence that way. My girlfriend gave a half apology and swore it wasn't her fault, but I told her that if she had just listened to me and virtually everyone else in her life about her driving, it might have been avoided. I told her to stay away for a couple of days while I figured out what to do. I was honestly pretty pissed she didn't offer to do anything. Not help Barry, new dog, nothing. Since then, Gizmo's been pretty distressed and lonely, so I decided it'd be best for her if I got a new dog as soon as possible. The guy my parents trades goats with had an older dog that needed to be rehomed, but he wanted a bit of money for him since he's full-blooded Anatolian with papers. So $200 total. It works for me, the same breed as Gizmo, and she's been around him before. Since it was her fault, I told my girlfriend to pay for a new doggo. She argued about it and dragged her feet, but eventually she paid for it. The whole situation just soured her to me, and I broke up with her a couple of days later. So now she, her family, and friends are saying I'm an idiot for not splitting the cost of the dog, and I should have, regardless of what I thought, because she was my girlfriend, and it was just an accident. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. She killed your dog because she wouldn't stop recklessly driving. What if your dog had been a child running onto the street? Everyone knows the dangers of reckless driving, and she was notified enough times for her to have stopped, but she clearly doesn't care about the well-being of others if she continues this much. Do not pay for anything. This isn't on you. Also, was just an accident? No, absolutely not just an accident. You only need to be told once not to drive recklessly like a goon for you to know it's inappropriate. And she continued, just an accident would imply she's not at fault, but she is. I'm honestly concerned that this accident will not drive it home for her. If there's a way for OP to report her, even if it's just to have someone in the law talk to her, then they should before she injures someone. OP, I'm sorry for your Sadie. Do what you can to ensure your ex-girlfriend won't do this to another pet or person. I don't know why girlfriend didn't take responsibility right away, because she was responsible. Sure, accidents happen. Well, it sounds like this one could have been avoided. She still showed no compassion when you lost your dog. I'm glad you dumped her, and you should take it a step further and block her and her family and friends. Okay, so this seems silly, and I want to start by saying that I, female 25, really, really, really like my mother-in-law, but she's so intrusive. Like, she tried to get involved in issues that are none of her concern. While her son, 32, and I were dating, she tried to get in between during every disagreement, be it major or minor. To be honest, I had a hard time setting boundaries, and my husband's attitude made it almost impossible to get her to give me the space I needed, especially when she says she's just trying to help. So after marriage, nothing changed. She would get in between her son and me in every problem we had. Not just this, but also give opinions and comments on things like the house, job, car, insurance, and basically marital issues that only concern my husband and me. I thought about ways to tell her off, but didn't want to come off as harsh and aggressive. So I came up with this line whenever she tried to get involved in our marriage. I would tell her, no ring, no opinion. And in response, she'd become upset and get offended. Sunday, my husband and I went over to her house and had dinner. Mother-in-law then, out of the blue, brought up my and my husband's decision to have kids and kept insisting on knowing when we were going to start trying and kept giving suggestions on when it's best to start. I felt so caught off guard and embarrassed 
but I didn't even engage or talk about it. I just said, sorry, mother-in-law, no ring, no opinion. The table went quiet and everyone looked at her to see her reaction. She looked sort of embarrassed and kept moving in her chair till she excused herself to the bathroom. My husband glared at me and he looked super angry. He then went to talk to her and it turned awkward. After we went home, he started berating me for what I said to his mom. He said it was rude and disrespectful. I told him that his mom is overstepped by commenting and giving opinions on marital matters that only concern us. He yelled at me saying, what the crap do you want me to do, disown her? Really? Think about how this would make you look in front of the family. Then he went to call his dad, who was also upset with me, saying I embarrassed his wife for no reason whatsoever and that I needed to get rid of this horrible attitude of mine. Am I the idiot? Did I go too far? Not the idiot. But oof, you have a husband problem, not a mother-in-law problem. This situation will only worsen unless you talk to him about establishing reasonable boundaries with his family. I highly recommend couples counseling and putting a pause on the baby making until you two can agree. Embarrassed her for no reason whatsoever. Um, excuse me, but she was literally demanding to know about your intimate activities with her son. I would have said much worse if I were you. So I'd say she got off lightly. Not the idiot. It sounds like your husband will never drop the rope with mummy though. Everyone's the idiot here. Your mother-in-law for not minding her own business. Your husband for not setting boundaries. You for marrying a man you knew had no boundaries with his mother and then acting like she's the problem when the problem is your marriage. The red flags were there when you were dating your husband. Why did you decide to ignore them? I think the issue is that LP, like many people, probably assumed and hoped that things would get better after marriage. She was wrong. Yes, she embarrassed mother-in-law, but it's the classic bully gets bullied and nobody knows how to respond because they've never seen it before. And now it's a the bully's upset situation. LP's husband is a giant child and idiot for blowing up on her. But the age gap already makes me feel that LP's gotten used to being told how to behave in their relationship. My husband, 34, is your brutally honest type of guy. He's also incredibly attractive because he takes good care of his appearance. From when we started dating, I got used to strangers or servers complimenting his looks and expressing their admiration in different ways. I always found it harmless, but he'd get so worked up over the smallest comments from people. He thinks it's rude and ignorant. We went out to eat at a new diner when he gave the waitress our orders, she looked at my husband, smiled, and complimented his hair. He smiled and said, thank you. He then looked at me and asked if I noticed how the waitress was basically trying to flirt. I noticed but figured maybe she did this to get more tips or something, since it's pretty common practice, and I used to do it. He looked at me shocked and asked, really? He then dropped it till the waitress got back with our meals. As she was putting the food down on the table, he looked at her and said, Hey, let me tell you a little secret. She looked at him and was like, um... He then said, I've been all around the world for the past 10 years, and I'd seen many, many beautiful women, but I'm married. He's stressed like this, to the most beautiful one, and she's all I see now and forever. The waitress looked dumbfounded. She smiled awkwardly and then asked why he was telling her this. He replied, saying it was saving her time and effort with whatever she was trying to do. She looked down and quickly walked away. I said that it was hurtful and uncalled for, but he said that she needed to hear it and learn a lesson and know her place. I told him she was being harmlessly flirty, barely, which could be her way of getting better tips, and that he didn't need to embarrass her like that. He was like, I don't get you. You should be encouraging me to shut this down instead. I said it was just a comment she made about his hair, and that's it. He got upset and said that I made him feel crappy for trying to set a boundary for himself, but I thought he overreacted. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Used to receiving compliments or not, that's an awful way to view it. Compliments don't equal intimate attraction. You can't compliment a friend or stranger without feeling the need to be in a relationship. The dude sounds like he jumps to conclusions and then boasts to make himself feel better. Maybe he needs to start giving out compliments instead of only receiving them to gain some humility. Not the idiot. 
But、um, what kind of person puts someone in their place? Your husband's desire to teach someone a lesson is disturbing. There is nothing normal or healthy about his response. That's genuinely foul. He's got a much bigger problem than cheerful waitresses. The first thing that your husband, and honestly you, needs to learn is that just because somebody compliments another person doesn't mean that they're flirting. And just because you think your husband's good looking doesn't mean everybody else does as well. Your husband may think he's the hottest thing around, but I guarantee plenty of people do not agree with you. She complimented him to be nice because maybe that's her personality and your husband was an idiot. People like to complain that men don't get compliments. It's because women are afraid it'll seem like flirting. Thanks to OP's husband, one less woman will feel comfortable complimenting men. I, 28 female, bought a house with a mortgage a few years ago in the UK. I had intended to live there, but then dear husband and I got work opportunities abroad, so I decided to let it out. My parents are first, dad, and second, mom, generation migrants, and have both worked since they were kids and were the only ones in their family to go to uni. They continued to support their siblings, nibblings, and my nan. When I wanted to let out my house, dad asked me to let it out to my aunt Tina, her husband Ned, and their kids. I was persuaded to charge them way under the market rate, and their monthly rent doesn't even cover the mortgage repayments. They also pay only a nominal amount because housing benefit covers the rest. My job pays well, and for the first time since I started working, I decided I wanted to treat myself, so I bought some nice jewelry and a designer bag. Which I ended up taking to the UK with me two weeks ago. A cousin I'm close to contacted me on Friday and told me that since I returned home, Tina and her husband have been telling everyone that their money is funding my lavish lifestyle and that I think I'm better than the rest of my family. I've gotten too big for my boots. I'm thinking of evicting them from the house because honestly, I've done them a huge favor over the years, and if they want to make snide comments about me, They can do it from someone else's property. So, am I the idiot for planning to evict my aunt and her family? You are the idiot. I think it's immoral to evict someone for saying something snide. Of course, everyone gripes about their landlord at some point, but they shouldn't expect to be evicted for it. How is this affecting you in any way? To put a family out of their house because of it seems over the top and an abuse of power. Not the idiot. But if you're gonna be petty and evict them, do it discreetly. It might help you to avoid some family drama if that's something you want. Raise the rent and try to drive them out of the house. Chances are, housing benefits will only cover a certain amount of the rent, and they'll be forced to find another place. But OP already made the mistake of renting to family. If OP goes for eviction or raising the rent, it could cause a huge rift in the extended family. Which is a big deal in first-generation immigrant families, as you can tell from the parents' reaction. So OP is in a lose-lose situation. At this point, OP's best option is to sell the house, make some excuse of moving abroad or something. You are the idiot, OP. Only because you would be evicting a family with children who are innocent in all of this. What they are doing by spreading rumors and lies isn't right, but evicting them isn't the correct response either. It would be best if you handled this like an adult, and either ignore it, knowing it'll pass, or confront them with the truth and financial numbers, proving that you are financing their lifestyle, not the other way around.